So um, before I introduce the speaker, I wanted to introduce someone to you that was walking around with me yesterday. So Dr. Michael Cummings is here um, as a new director for the system. So he'll be at all the schools, but of course he loves Combs the most and was here uh, most of the day yesterday in his back so that I could introduce you to him so you would see him around, okay? And then I'm gonna put him on the spot. He's gonna pray for us this morning. But if you see him, Dr. Cummings, say, hey, Dr. Cummings, how you doing? Welcome to Combs, whatever. If you see him in the hall, if he comes into your classroom, then just let the teacher do their thing, all right? So please pray for us. Yet for your grace I'll not be saved Yet for your grace I'll go my way I'm forever grateful Truly he's been faithful to me, Lord Your amazing grace Father, we honor you and lift you up and we pray that your hand of guidance be upon these, your children, and also these instructors, teachers, that makes sense. those that give them guidance. Okay. And we pray that they have an awesome day. It is in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> amen. A man of many talents. So that's Dr. Cummings, right? Remember that? So say, see you, Dr. Cummings. All right, so the deal this morning... Um, and of course we have eighth grade up in the classrooms doing connect, they're over here on the camera, eighth grade. Um, but you've got something special. I've known Steve Wigginton, he is the, the Louisville FCA director, Louisville area FCA director, and uh, is over thousands of schools, thousands of kids, um, Wig and I have been friends for 26 years. The first meeting we had, I was the FCA sponsor at Eastern High School, brand new. Uh, we were at the United, Middletown United Methodist in their gym, and Wig came in, introduced himself. We talked a little bit. We've been great friends since. And a great friend is someone um, that comes when you need them. And so, like, I was moved, every time I've moved, I've ended up calling Wig, because he has a little truck. But he's there, he comes every time. He calls me, says, hey, I need you to speak at Middletown um, over at Mid-America, and I'm there, I do it, we're friends. But even bigger than that, we have Christ in common, okay? So Wig is gonna do some stuff for you, has a talk for you, there will be times for you to clap, there will be times for you to be a quiet, and you'll know, because he'll lead you in that, okay? But let's give it up for Steve Wigginton. <laughs> Love this guy, good, good, good dude right there. Um, Hey, appreciate the opportunity to be here. Um, love Cal, love, uh, love the sports that y'all put out there. Fellowship of Christian Athletes, y'all may have heard of FCA before, just in all the schools. Love to bring sports and Jesus together. Those of you who've seen me do my thing before, I'm just going to do a few little ball handle drills that are going to relate to what I want to talk about. I don't have you for very long, so I'm going to jump in there pretty quick. But when I need you, I'll just maybe throw a ball out there. If the ball comes to you, you become my volunteer, and then you make your way up here. Um, so we'll, we will jump in here very quickly.
your frustration Put your head out on your plane And remind you all your blessings And I ain't nothing new
no. No, he's not done. Unstable. volunteered stand up where you are. Whoever came up here, stand up. Give them a hand. Give them a big hand. All right. Go ahead, see. Ten minutes? Can I have ten minutes? No. All right, all right. Um, sometimes when I go to, to a basketball camp, sometimes when I go um, to a school, sometimes they'll say, hey, Steve, can you come do that little ball handling demonstration thing that you do? Um, and what I've learned over time is that people, everybody appreciates a good demonstration. That the reason you have like America's Got Talent is because they're not just up there kind of talking about what they do, but you actually get to see what they do. They, they demonstrate. That little girl, a little nine-year-old girl who sings opera, raise your hand if you've seen that little girl who sings opera, you're like, how's that coming out of her mouth? She didn't just stand up and say, hey, I, I, can, I can sing, I got a real powerful voice but she shows you, she demonstrates what she has. When I see, do we have any cheerleaders here? Raise your hand if you're a cheerleader. If you're a cheerleader, okay, put your hands down. Okay, if you're a cheerleader, almost always, if I find out you're a cheerleader, I walk up to you and I'm saying, hey, if you're a cheerleader, can you do the splits? Because I think every cheerleader I'll be able to do the splits. That's in my mind, I think that's where I'll be. And so I can't kind of have someone just drop down. I can't do that. I can't do this, but uh, if I see someone who says that they're a rapper, I'm like, wait, rap for me. If I see someone who's a gymnast, guy or girl, the first question I always ask is, hey, can you do a backflip? Can, can you do a backflip? Just, and I love to see gymnasts just like stand there and throw a backflip. But we all love to see demonstrations. I don't think God's any different. God realizes the power of a demonstration. Romans chapter 5, verse 8, says, But God demonstrates his own love for us in this, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God demonstrates his own love for us in this, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God didn't just kind of sit back and say, well, you know, they ought to know. I mean, I created them, so they ought to know that I love them. You know, they, they, they can... They should know that, but he demonstrated. He didn't even just say it, he demonstrated. But even the fact that if you got a best friend, your best friend, you may, maybe you would take a bullet for your best friend, maybe. But hear God saying, even while we were yet sinners, even while we had spit in his face, and we'd say we're gonna do our own thing, that he would go and he would demonstrate his love for us by going to the cross. How do we demonstrate our love for him? If he demonstrates his love for us in that way, that he's going to go, go and give his life, his son's life, just so he can, he can have us uh, in heaven with him forever. How do we demonstrate our love for him? When I was a senior in high school, unlike some of you, I, I didn't grow up in church. We went to kind of Christmas and Easter. We went Christmas and Easter is what we did. And my senior year in high school, I start dating this girl. She invites me to her church. Go to her church. Was just intrigued by the people I saw there. Went back again. Went back again. Senior year in high school. Pick up one of these. This is a... Pick up one of these. Begin to read it for the first time in my life as a senior in high school. After four months of reading this, asking lots of questions, I'm sitting in church one Sunday morning, the last Sunday of April, my senior year in high school. And I hear this pastor ask a question. He goes, how many of you know 100% for sure that when you die, you're going to spend eternity in heaven? And I thought, how can anybody, how can anybody know 100% for sure? And he read a verse out of that same book. Romans 10, 9 says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. 
It doesn't say you might be saved or could be or ought to be, but you will 100% for sure be saved if you do two things. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, if you, there's been a point in your life where you're going this way and you say, I keep messing things up, Jesus, will you come be Lord? You come be boss. And I'm not going to keep going my way. But I'm going to do a thing called repent. And I'm going to obey you since you're Lord. You're boss. I'm going to go your way. And lastly, if you believe in your heart that he was raised from the dead. Only one guy has walked out of his grave under his own power. And his name's Jesus. And if we believe that, if we confess on our mouth that he's Lord, we let him be the Lord, the boss of our life, we repent, and we say we believe with all our heart that you are who you say you are, you will be saved. So I'm sitting there as a senior in high school. I'm understanding for the first time. I get it. Okay, so how does Steve demonstrate his love for God at that moment? Steve gets out of that little pew where I'm sitting in, and Steve walks forward, unashamed of what anybody else is going to think. Here's this dude, a senior in high school. Man, he should have thought, he should have figured that out a long time ago. Was willing to demonstrate my love for Jesus. I hate it when people kind of give an invitation. And they say, okay, if you want to follow Jesus, just raise your little pinky and keep, keep your eyes closed. No, if, if he's Lord, then you're willing to demonstrate your love by walking down the aisle in front of people. There's a guy named Nick Shuddy. Anybody know who Nick Shuddy is? Nick Shuddy is Mayo High School's quarterback. Mayo High School is probably going to win the state championship of football. Nick Shuddy, this past Sunday, loved Nick Shuddy, got baptized. He's a senior in high school. He got baptized. He didn't do it by, behind some little curtain. He did it out in front of everybody where everybody could see because he wanted to demonstrate his love for Jesus. Love to see that. We're taking ice pops to JCTMS football uh, this summer. Take them. We hand out ice pops. I pray for the team afterwards. The whole team, they, they got their ice pops. A couple of kids came up and said, hey, thank you for the ice pops. It's really hot out here. One boy comes up and he says, hey, thank you for coming and talking about Jesus. I just want you to know I'm a follower of Jesus and, and I go to church, this church he names, and he goes, man, it is so good to hear Jesus' name out here on this football field. I'm like, what grade are you in, man? And he said, I'm sixth grade. I've never had a sixth grader come up to me in the middle of football practice and say that all the time I've been around. But he, he was unashamed about who his Lord is to come up and, and, and say that. How can we demonstrate our love for Jesus? Let me give you two more stories and I'm done with you. One story, we're at FCA Leadership Camp this summer. We take everybody with us, 480 athletes that we take out door to door. We walk up the doors and there's groups of like eight of us. We walk up Doors out in the community in Bowling Green, knock on doors, say, hey, we're, we're Fellowship of Christian Athletes. We're just out in the community, and we're just seeing, is there anything we can pray for you about? Okay? And then some people say, no, no, thank you, and we move on. Okay? But most everybody had something. Yeah, I'm going through this hard time. I know you pray. And one of the athletes, high school, middle school athletes, prays for that person. And when they get to the end of their prayer, after they get done, they say, hey, can I take just a couple minutes and share with you the greatest prayer I've ever prayed? And the person would always say yes. And then they take a minute and they talk about when they came to that point where they surrendered and let Jesus be the Lord of their life. So we do that for about an hour and a half in the community. We're walking back to the bus. We're walking back to the bus. And this one girl in our group, she said, hey, there's a homeless lady across the street. Can we go pray for her? I'm like, no, no, we can't do that. Sure. So we walk across the street and we kind of gather around this lady and, and some of the high school is praying for this, this lady and she starts crying and, uh, and they pray and they finish praying and one girl in our group says, hey, do you have a Bible? And she said, well, I know some Bible stories but I don't have a Bible. And this girl reaches into her book bag and I knew what she was going to do because we give, everybody when they come to camp, we give them this paperback FCA Bible and she's going to give her her paperback FCA Bible. She reaches in her book bag and I'm standing right next to her and she reaches past that paperback Bible and she gets her leather bound Bible. And she pulls it out, and she hands it to this lady. She, she goes, the Bible is my study Bible. For the past six years, everything that I felt God was impressing upon me, I've written in there, and I've got notes from sermons I've heard, and I want you to have this Bible. Man, I'm sitting there thinking, that just taught me a lesson. This girl demonstrated her love for God by not just kind of giving her, well, this is the E. I can give you the paperback thing. 
but she gave her best. And I think when we give our best for God, that demonstrates to people, because it demonstrated to me, like, man, this girl ain't playing, dude. She just gave her best. Gave her very, very best for Jesus. Huge thing. One last story. Anybody ever heard of a guy named Zach Danley? Zach Danley? If you actually, a few people heard my boy Zach Danley. Love my boy Zach. Zach Danley graduated here. Zach, Zach Danley played lacrosse here. Love Zach Danley. He was in your shoes. He was in your seat. But this dude has graduated now when he was a senior. They have a senior project. I assume they still do it, that seniors do some kind of project. So Zach was the class president, and he pulled everybody together and said, hey, we want to build an orphanage in India. And the way I priced it out, it's going to cost $40,000. And we're going to raise $40,000 in four months, but we can't take a dime from our parents. We have to come up with it. Zach Daly, since he's leading the charge, he had a car. He sold his car, got 6000 bucks off his car, and gave 6000 bucks to the project to build an orphanage in India. Zach Danley demonstrated his love for God. You may not have a car. You may not have 6000 bucks, But you got something that maybe it's you going and putting an arm around someone. Maybe it's you just inviting someone who you know needs to, to have a friend. But that's... You pray about how do you demonstrate your love for him because he demonstrated his love for you. Last thing I got for you, you may be sitting there and you're thinking, hey, I, I don't even know, kind of like you were, Steve, as a senior in high school, I don't even know where I stand with Jesus. I, I'm here, but there's never been that point where I've just said, you come in and be Lord, be boss of my life. If there's never been that point, you are blessed to have some teachers chapel leaders, people around, administrators who would love nothing more. There's nothing more important in their day than for you to go up and say, hey, what that dude talked about in there? Man, I'm ready. To, how do I let him be boss, Lord of my life? You go find them today. Don't wait till tomorrow. Don't wait till next week. Not promise that. But all you got to do is you just decide, hey, I'm, I'm going to let him be Lord. I'm going this way, and I believe with all my heart that he walked out of his own grave. Let me pray. I'll let you guys go. God, thank you for this crew here. Lord, I thank you that you created every one of them for a purpose. And that purpose is just to, to love you, to accept um, who you are, to accept your lordship in their life. And I pray that there be one, two, three, four who would be ready to do business with you today and that able to reach out to someone and just say, hey, I want, I want that relationship with Jesus right now. God, bless our day. Bless the conversations. Bless the, the people even sitting here who do know you. I pray that you would just bring to their mind ways that they can demonstrate their love for you. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.